Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth video of the deck setup series. So in this video, we are going to talk about the agent machine setup. Okay. So what is agent? Agent is basically the machine on which our remote executions are going to run. People are not going to work on that particular machine. That machine is solely going to be used for running our automated test. Okay. So on a higher level, there are two setups which are required for this, but based on the project needs, uh, there are a lot of other factors to that, but we'll be covering the higher level aspect here. So two things, execution agent installation is required and then the agent configuration. Now let's take a look at the detailed steps. So first and foremost thing is we, we have to install Tosca as an execution agent. So when you would have installed Tosca, you would have seen this option uh, Tosca commander as well as execution agent. Now in case of remote executions, we can use just the execution agent and that is possible since we have created the AOS workspace which we have talked about in the previous video. So using execution agent we have a bit of constraint but more of the benefits. Okay, So if you have created something uh, your automated scripts are created using the classic engine in that particular case you have to use Tosca commander in terms of installing it but if you have used engine 3.0 like for your development or anything higher than this then you can use the execution agent option okay now that is the benefit in terms of execution like you will be only installing the execution agent so that is the whole workspace is not going to get created here this is only going to give you the platform to execute your remote executed remote execution scripts okay another factor to this is cost as well so tosca commander comes at a higher price in comparison to the execution agent only license. So specifically for remote executions, companies would buy execution agent only licenses because it is cheaper than Tosca Commander. While if you buy a Tosca Commander license, you have the flexibility of both creating the automated script as well as executing. But in case of execution agent only license, you can only execute it. Okay. Now on whichever machine, like if I have 10 machines, 20 machines, how many machines are there? I have to do the setup at once for me to enable to execute my remote scripts, like the scripts which I want to do the remote execution with. So this is the first thing which we need to do. Okay. Other than this, we have some optional options which we are going to cover at the uh, probably the later part of the video. But before that, uh, let's cover the mandatory parts. So these are few pointers as to the best practices or what happens and all those kind of things. So we were talking about uh, the agents before and now the test events will come into picture. Now test events are basically created in Tosca specifically for the need for remote executions. Okay, what does test event contain? It will contain the configuration as to what all, uh, what is your server details and what all machines are present for executing your remote scripts as well as your test scripts are part of that. So whenever you kick off a test event, it is not going to execute the scripts on your local machine. It is going to execute the scripts on the machines which are configured in whatever way you have configured and whatever machines and whatever setup you have done based on that, it is going to get executed in the agent machines. Okay. Now, obviously, if we want to execute the scripts, we should that particular agent machine should have all the privileges. And in this case, agent machine operates as they are the user. They are the Windows user. Okay. And on top of this, let's say in your project, you are using like, let's say, picking up some data from Excel or something like that, or any specific proprietary application setup is required before using that. So all those things should also exist in that particular machine for your script to run from your local or whichever machine you're triggering to the remote environment. So basically, whichever environment your script is working fine in your local environment, that similar setup should be present in your remote machine as well. Okay. Now the third thing is the jobs which we schedule for execution works on this particular basis uh, for that matter in any remote execution uh, setup is that that particular machine is available to take up the job. Okay. So, uh, in our case, we call it as agent machines and in case of agent, it should be available to pick up any job. Now, let's say if all the machines are busy, it is not going to immediately uh, stop your run, but it is going to wait for it. It is going to queue and then there should be a certain timeout uh, setup based on that little timeout. But let's say 
all of the machines are offline then we are going to get that uh, problem of our job not getting executed so that's on a higher level should be started and be in available mode not necessarily it could be in a busy mode as well and if it is getting available in some time then also we can execute slash busy i can mention something like that now the important part is to set up your agent configuration okay now agent configuration is something which we will set up using this particular file tosca distribution agent.exe okay now this particular file can be located in this particular location so if i search with this or you can go to the tricentis folder as well it's easier to search with this so if i search with this i'll be able to see this particular folder if i go here i'll be able to find two files here tosca let me search with t tosca distribution agent.exe file is there okay now if i right click run as admin i will be able to start with the setup but before that i just wanted to show you this file as well so these are the things which you can do uh, using uh, like whenever wherever you have to set up the optional thing like the proxy server and all you can open this file and uh, let me open it and show it once so if i open open it in notepad this will have the parameters in terms of settings like uh, you will have a lot of different parameters what's the username what's the password uh, configuration subfolder setup so these things can also be altered as per your needs this is an optional thing which i'll explain later now to set up tosca distribution agent you go to this particular exe file you right click and you click on run as administrator okay the moment you do that you will get some pop up of uh, approving that and then once that is done you'll be able to see this particular pop up uh, started on your machine okay so if you right click on this you'll be able to see the option configure agent or stop and exit the agent other than that you can click on the show hidden icons and here also uh, let me stop this here also you'll be able to see this okay so i think i have to open let me close one and let me open another one okay so here uh, on every machine on every agent machine you will have to click on this configure agent and this all setup is one time setup once you have set it up unless you are not changing anything you don't have to do anything else okay so the moment i click on configure agent it is going to start it is going to throw a pop up here which is going to give us an option to fill in the key details like uh, uh, like what is the server address and all those kind of details so let it get loaded up and then i'll showcase you that uh, till the time it is loading i will uh, show some issues happening in this but let me uh, let's wait for that to uh, pick it up but before that i can cover the optional part so in case you're setting up the proxy servers you can go to this particular file which i was showing before exe.config and there you can pass whatever your proxy address proxy username and proxy password in the notepad file which i have opened okay so this is uh, in case you want to use the proxy servers other than that there could be a case that uh, uh, if i have let, let's say 10 different remote machines set up okay and let's say my I want to execute certain scripts into certain configuration of the remote machines. Okay, so we can set that up as well in Tosca server. Okay, in Tosca server, we go and we configure each and every machine where we can mention the details like, okay, this particular machine name is this and it has this this configuration setup. For example, RAM 16 GB is there, 24 GB is there, and let's say few scripts I want to execute only in 24 GB, so I can set that parameter up there and then in the configuration and accordingly my script will be executing in that particular machine which it is uh, which it requires like the setup which it requires it is an optional thing it is not part of scope of this video but i just wanted to uh, highlight that okay so this has not loaded some issue in this let me stop and uh, start this again maybe i'll see okay so this is loaded already so yeah so this is something uh, how this is going to get loaded and this is going to have a lot of different options okay the major option here is we have to connect to the server so understand this thing 
that Tosca server we have created already, right? And uh, we have a certain uh, IP address or uh, whatever the server name if you have set it up, you have to replace this here. So you can use IP or you can use uh, the server address to mention here. Now what this will do is this will establish the connection between the server and this particular agent machine. Okay. And this is going to utilize the communication service here. Okay. Now this is one setup. Other than that, there are a lot of other setups which we can do. So one thing is called uh, authenticate agent. Okay. So, so okay. Uh, it takes little time to click on uh, the different options, but here the setup workspace is there. Okay. So let's say you have a option, you have a scenario in which there are different workspaces and I want to execute certain workspaces only. So I can set that parameters here as well. So the workspace name, the user ID, the password with which I want to execute. Okay. And you can click on this option to configure the machine as well. Once the server is set up, like uh, I have not, I don't have the Tosca server set up here. That's why I'm not able to see this machine, but it is essentially going to give you the options like how much RAM do you have? How much this uh, machine configurations? I think the desktop uh, width, height and all those parameters could go in this. Other than that, here this authenticate agent is there. So what happens is in most of the cases, we will have to give this permission. So basically this is giving a more secure layer on top of uh, even if everything belongs to the same network. So what happens is uh, entering these details will tell Tosca commander or that server that this particular machine can be really trusted for this particular project. Okay. So what happens is you go into your Tosca server and uh, you can create one client ID and client secret. So client secret is nothing but a token and the ID as well is some form of ID which will get generated. Okay. So you have to create one user there which will uh, uh, which will create all these these two details and you can enter that here. Okay. And similar thing in case of local host, you have to enter whatever is the endpoint URL, which is going to contain mostly the server address. And uh, uh, these options are going to be as it is. So we just need to replace the local host with the server address here. Now this is going to authenticate your agent. Okay. Now other thing is unattended execution. Okay. So there are two options in case of Tosca. We have something called RDP connection remote desktop connection as well as we have all agent connection. Okay. So we can set this thing up as well. Uh, you will click on check RDP configuration. So this will give going to give you the details as well as. So see here what all things we can set it up. These all things will be displayed here. This is most likely you can set it up using uh, help of your infrastructure team. Okay. Now this thing is uh, in case we want to set up the log files and all that is an optional setup, but yeah, we can set it up here as well. Okay. So this is all in all we'll set up for the Tosca distributed agent configuration. Okay. Once you have filled in all the right details here and you click on save. So I have to, I have to cancel it, but if you click it on save and you enter all the details correctly as per your uh, uh, project setup, you'll be able to see that this particular this particular uh, icon is going to turn green. Okay. So that means that the agent is available and ready for use. Okay. If you leave it for some time, it will turn out uh, yellow saying that it is idle. It is not being utilized. And if some issue is there in the setup, then it is going to uh, display red that uh, it's a failure. Some issues there you have to fix it up in the setup. And similarly like that, uh, I think uh, there would be a few other colors as well based on different needs, but higher level, these three colors are going to be there. Okay. So this is what I have covered here on the agent machine, right? Click on this. If you have started the agent successfully, you'll see a green agent icon and uh, connect to the server tab and uh, enter the address of the deck server distribution service. This is what I was explaining. And then set up the agent to allow RDP for unattended execution to do so go to the unattended execution perform the following actions. I have put the link here uh, of the Tricentis uh, uh, details about this particular uh, setup as well. So there are few fields which are going to get populated which we need to set it up. Okay. So this is majorly the setup required for the agent machine. 
now we are done with the deck server installation we are done with the agent machine setup okay next in the next video we are going to take a look at tosca commander setup in which we are going to explain how to set up your scripts and all those part of things and kick off your execution uh, i hope you found this video useful a uh, lot of people were asking for the linkedin article link uh, initially i was not aware that i can publish an article and uh, then i can later update it as well because uh, this particular portion is remaining so what i'll do is i'll publish this article now and uh, only one portion would be remaining which i would uh, once completed i'll put i'll add like append to this particular article i hope this has helped uh, thank you very much uh, for following and subscribing have a great day bye bye